If you are watching this, you probably want to know how to make your images look more professional and how to jump up to the next level. Well, you are in a good place. Today we'll talk about framing. Knowing the ways of framing your images for sure will help improve your visualizations. Let's start by explaining what this technique is and why it is worth to use it. Framing is the technique of drawing attention to the subject of your image by blocking other parts with something in the scene. Notice how I set up the camera. In the foreground, I have the monitor and the plant in the background. And on the right side, there is the ceiling. These elements help you to focus more on the subject, in this case it's me. Let me tell you about the elements of the framing. The buff field is the distance between the nearest and the farthest objects in the image that appears acceptably sharp. The longer the distance, the deeper the buff field is created. By using this technique, you can pinpoint the subject or main point of interest. Foreground elements lead the viewer's eyes towards the subject. They should be used strategically in order to create a pleasant balance by closing and narrowing a space inside a frame. Vignetting effect helps the viewer to focus on the most important part in the image. It can be created either in frame buffer or in Photoshop. I personally prefer uh, to use this effect in Photoshop, but if I want to keep everything in one program, I simply add this effect to the frame buffer. You may ask me, Aga, why should I spend time to do this? Hmm, that's a great question. The image has the sense of depth, and layers. Basically, by including something in the foreground, you can add an extra dimension to the shot and make it way more interesting. This way, you are creating additional layers of your image. You will be able to lead the viewer's eyes towards the main focal point. By using an element in the foreground in a clever way, you are able to draw a viewer's attention into the specific part of the image. Framing can obscure large boring surfaces. When your subject is surrounded by some large boring subject matter, like a sky without any clouds or a large piece of street or floor, framing can really help to hide these things and make your visualization more interesting. By using some things in the foreground of your frame, you can tell more about the place. For example, by using some greenery in the image, you can convey a viewer to the concept of connecting architecture and nature. Or, when you show a piece of wall of the old building in front of the contemporary structure, you can present the connection between old and new architecture. Your imagination is the only limit when it comes to what you can use as a frame. I'm going to give you some examples which you can try. Use greenery, flowers or tree branches to bring attention to the subject and highlight the location. Doors, windows, arches, walls, columns give you tons of options for putting your frame around your focal point. You can use sometimes more abstract frames by using the contrast between light and shadow. Use the bright parts to emphasize your subject. You don't always have to use the stationary objects. Try to include some moving cars or cyclists on the bike or a person running in your frame. Not every visualization has to be framed. It's not always the case. Typically, the best and most natural looking shots has one or two sides framed. Always ask yourself, does this element clutter my image? 
If your answer is yes, don't add this. Remember that when framing is used creatively and with purpose, it can take your images to the next level. If you master this technique, you will be more likely to create some extraordinary images. Okay, I think that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Also, don't forget to like this video if you found this interesting, share it, subscribe and do all these wonderful things. See you guys in the next video.